Now today, one of the things I wanted to try to do is get Vlad's parts moving along, get that Bomoda part finished for him. I know he wants those back. He's ready to put the bike back together again. But we originally thought maybe this afternoon we'd get a ride, but the weather report says rain. So I'm going to try to get some painting done before the rain comes. Now my kids just got new carpeting in their house, and I think, but I'm not sure until I try it, I think they're going to donate their old rug to the garage. Now this one was donated by Luciano, but then we've used it, of course, for a long time. But having a nice new piece of rug in here would be a nice addition if it works out. Now the Dime Cycle Credit, they have kept me in the loop as we're waiting for that muffler still. I'm waiting for my, my adjustable grips. Those are the last two parts of that restoration. And I would hopefully uh, have them in the next week or two, but I, I know things like that are beyond a business's control. And we have Yamaha Bike Night, Two Stroke Night coming up less than two weeks at Rutz Hut. I hope we get a good turnout for that. And I hope the weather's nice. So it's time to feed the fish, feed the birds, feed everybody, have some coffee, and get started on that motor repair. That's gone over several days so far, and I've taken my time. I'm trying to do the best job I can, but at some point in time, it just gets to be cost ineffective when you put that many hours into an old part. And on this repair, I want to try this little trick that John Pothia passed on to us. And actually, I have a couple of stone chips on the other bikes that if it works out as good as I think it will, most of the things John suggests are pretty cut and dry and they work well. I have a couple of other stone chips, and I'll try that then to, uh, on a day like today, when I have time, try to get some of these little chips filled in. I like to maintain the bikes. And the problem is always, these are not show bikes. We ride. And we ride in uh, cold weather, warm weather. Get caught in the rain a few times, more than a few times, and they do take abuse. But if you constantly do the maintenance, they really don't get old as quick as other people. And when you let the maintenance go for any length of time, you turn around and you look and you say, oh man, it's like weeds growing in the garden. Yes, boys. It's that magic time of day. It's that magic time of day. How come everybody's hungry in the morning, including me? Now, for the next probably four or five months, we'll be eating lettuce, fresh cut lettuce every day from Karen's little garden. Fresh arugula, parsley, and just, w just wait till they legalize marijuana here. <laughs> Anyway, I want to get that painting done before the rains come. They are slated to rain early this afternoon. Yes, it's that time of day. It's a very magic time of day. And then we'll be able to get down and get started on our daily chores. So the first thing is to look at how these repaired areas have dried up. By letting them dry overnight, you really guarantee that this is going to powder off. And I'm using a sanding block and some 400. And I want to get this as flat as possible, detail it out. Try to get this smooth now. The smoother I can get it now, the better. Because what I want to do is airbrush on the black. I don't, well, I'm going to try to do this. I decided to try to do this without putting that seal of primer because we have this edge we want to make not disappear. It's not really going to ever disappear. We want to minimize it. And by airbrushing this, I'll guarantee that I'll put less paint on than if I didn't use an airbrush. But the first thing is, is to get every part of this as smooth as possible. Because the airbrush doesn't put on as much paint, say, as if I were to spray this with a spray gun. And then I'll try to, if it, if it isn't raining by then, I'll try to even get some clear on here. And then as I'm making my plan up, where that crack is, there's a ditch. A, literally a ditch and I'm going to take some of the black and some of the clear and do that John Pothier little trick and see if that Wallace is dry and see if I can make that work so if, if this is just one of the parts of the job I've just got to pick away at this until this is as smooth as I can possibly make it 
get all the edges radiused off. Again, most of the parts of this kind of a repair, they're just labor intensive. It's like digging a ditch and there's, there's just no, you know, you can't, you can't do this part of it with a power sander is what I'm saying. And it just takes time. I was at the dentist the other day and I told him about, I, when I went to a dentist as a kid, he told me something that it stayed with me for life. I used to think, why does it take so long to drill a tooth? It's such a little tiny piece. And he said, good dental work takes time. Well, it, good body work takes time too. You just can't pull it out of a jar or anything, that's for sure. Anyway, we're gonna pick away at this, try to get this all smoothed down. Then get to this back piece, which is gonna be a lot more labor than the front piece. That's why I'm doing the easy one first. So here's a, little, here's a little thing that I've used. This is just a paper roll that the sticky back sandpaper comes on. You get near the end of the sandpaper and the end of it is not sticky. But one thing it's really good for, for dressing off a radius edge like this, this couldn't be any better. And it's these radius edges that just take a lot of time to get them nice. And it's really, it really pays if you have, if you're gonna do a lot of body work like this, to save these and just put a new piece of sandpaper over the top of it. But we're, I'm looking forward to trying that little John Pothia trick because I can use that on several little spots. I was looking around, the RD has a couple of stone chips out of it. Actually, all the bikes have something. And I like to do the maintenance on an ongoing basis, not wait until it's so bad that, that I look at it and I go, oh, geez. We've got this relatively flat and smooth. We also have, right now have edges where the bondo ends, the plastic begins. Now I've got, this is the, this is the part that I think will make this just a little bit nicer. Don't let the paper stay in one spot because what this does, the capillary action of the CA gets down into any little, on a microscopic level you can't even see. It's capillary material. And that should give us the best chance. Now I can just dust sand it. That should give us the best chance of Hopefully this is not going to crack. Now these parts, I know they're very prone to crack and they're very thin. And it's not only that they're thin, I'm sure, because I, in the machine shop that I was partners on, we did a lot of injection molding. I know there's all different quality levels of plastic. I would be willing to bet this is not the highest quality. See, the highest quality of stuff that we ever used in the injection molding was glass-filled nylon. And it, it was expensive stuff. We used to make parts for the control system of the model planes. But that glass-filled nylon was not as cheap as the plastic that you would make other less stress-related parts out of. Okay, now that feels, that feels real nice. And I think that's our best shot at the work we put in here, not letting it, that it's going to crack. By the way, this is a really handy tool to have to minimize the dust and constantly be changing the towels, take them outside and shake them out because that, all the dust from sanding really accumulates and it just it gets on everything in the shop. That's why we try not to do this kind of work in the summer. Now I got the bridge part of this done. Now this is the last part. And this part was all full of blisters and bubbles and I have a gut feeling what happens, the exhaust system heat somehow accumulates down in this area and it was it was just making a paint bubble from that because we have all this, this material, but I see the material doesn't go out here, so there's a pipe or something here. So I'm suggesting to Vlad, maybe he can get a piece of this material, it'll, it'll make this, well, it'll stack the deck in your favor just a little bit that this isn't going to all bubble up now. But keep in mind, this is the bottom of the motorcycle. And to be honest, on my bikes, the, even parts that you don't see, I like to have them neat. I like to have them clean. But there's a point reality sets in that I always say, if, if, you, if you take into account that you don't have infinite time, time is not infinite, it's limited. And if you spend that time on the parts that you do see, 
you get a just a lot more satisfaction out of say <laughs> buffing out the bottom of the oil pan and nobody ever sees it and you leave the tank rusty so I don't know I try to prioritize as good as I can but this is going to require a lot of sanding because it's a lot of and I might have to do some of it with the soft block too but you got to get this flat and then we're going to do the same thing with the CA and then I'm going to see <clears throat> I'm going to see if it's my lucky day I can airbrush all the black without using primer and what that'll do that'll keep this edge easier to bury that edge and buff it out in the very end now we've really got that as good as I think we can make it including the edge I'm gonna have to vacuum this up here in fact I do a lot of this with my hand before I put the CA on and I can see I can feel right back here is a Your hand, with a, especially with a rubber glove on, can really find these little areas much better. And now it's time to put some CA on that, same thing as we did before. And then that'll seal, I think it'll give it a little bit of a, well, we hope, we hope it's going to be that final little thing that's going to keep it from cracking. And I think what we really need is another cup of coffee here. The thing with the CA is you wipe it in. Do not hold the rag in even for a nanosecond or for sure, for sure, it's going to be a problem. This is just one more little insurance policy that hopefully this will uh, take the least amount of damage. But I'm sure this part, because it's exposed to that heat down there, that's really a problem. It's more of a problem than it would be if it wasn't exposed to that heat. Anyway, we're going to put a final finish on this, maybe give it two or three more coats of CA. Get the airbrush fired up, our good old Awada airbrush. Thank you, Will Namora. So the whole part now is final sanded. I wiped it down with prep ball. And I'll tack rag it just before I, well, I want to get the airbrush get some black in the airbrush and see if we can get this done and the idea is to minimize the amount of paint along the edge where we're going to where the touch up ends well I don't want to have a big thick edge like a step there I can minimize it when we're all done with the part I'll hit this because there's some of some of wear and tear from the bike being driven I'll buff this out and just bring the buffing right over there and hopefully that'll well that will be within budget too now, of course, we have paint left over from every job, so I know this will be a perfect match. The only downside of using the Iwata airbrush is we're probably going to have to fill a cup several times. And because we've spent the time cleaning it at the end, right away it sprays. Iwata airbrush, what a good investment this is. Now I got three brush air, three airbrush coats on and unfortunately it started raining. So we're going to have to either wait out the rain or see how this day is going to play out. I'll check the weather of course. But it's, it's actually going to be to our advantage. It's better. The longer that dries the better. So while this is drying this is the picture what a ditch would look like. So I want to fill that ditch with a little bit of black paint first before I do anything. And again, then I'm going to take clear and put enough black in it that it's opaque. 
at the very end of this once once this is all done and and then hopefully be able to block sand it down and buff it right into the rest of the port and it may not be perfect but it'll be a lot better than seeing a big white crack the whole idea here is to fill the ditch so that it's a little bit higher than the paint around it so I can ultimately block sand it in And of course, that's just now the whole part has to dry. Now we can't work on this. And we're, good because the rain is probably going to be here for the rest of the day. We're just going to have to wait it out and see. I'm not going to try to even think about shooting clear when it's raining. Now, unfortunately for us, <clears throat> this is one of those days that the rain clearly won the game and it won big time. So. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to put this aside until we get a chance to work on it again. Weather this time of year is very variable. Looks like the little ditch is filling in. Looking forward to seeing how that's going to work. And actually it'll probably be to our advantage to let some of this, the touch of paint dry over at least overnight or even more. Anyway, it's all trying to salvage a part that would be very difficult to replace or expensive or both. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.